we are so glad that you are here with us this morning. If you are a visitor, we would especially like to welcome you here today and ask you to fill out a Visitor Connect card that is located in the back of your pew and please drop it in the offering box as you exit the sanctuary this morning. Thank you for joining us. We will be having a baptism service on Sunday morning, May the 9th, which is also Mother's Day. If you would like to be baptized, please see Brother Nate for more information. Also, ladies, you should have received a Connect card from Miss Margarita this morning or last week. If you can please fill those out and you can return those back to her so that we ladies can stay connected. Ladies will be having a paint party on Monday, May 24. Please go ahead and mark your calendars for this fun event and more information will be forthcoming. Are you ready to serve? Please fill out a form that's located in the foyer on the table and you may complete it and place it in the offering box located at the back of our sanctuary. Please join us again here Wednesday night at 6.30. We would love to have you here for adult Bible study in the main sanctuary, B Kids, as well as BSM. Thank you. If you've not joined us on Block Note for Church Announcements, please do so by texting Bethel LH to 84576. And finally this morning for your ways to give, if you are in service with us today, you can make tithes and offerings donations located at the back of our sanctuary, or you can donate through our Tidely app or our church website. And please see your information update page for more announcements. Now everyone, let's stand this morning and get ready to worship. We'll stand across the building. As we get ready to worship this morning, it's been a great week. Amen? It's been a wet week. Amen? Yesterday, anyways. And yesterday was enough wet for everybody, I know. But today, the Holy Spirit's here, and the Holy Spirit wants to reign in this place. Amen? In our lives today. So this morning, we welcome you to worship in your own way. Enjoy God. Let God enjoy you. And let's just have a great moment of worship this morning. Let's lift our hands across the building. Let's welcome him in this place. Father, we love you. We come this morning to adore you. We come this morning to worship you and to lift you up. Father, you are King of kings and Lord of lords and the name above all names. And there is no one that compares to you today, Father. We ask you, Lord God, if you will, in a mighty way today, come in, settle in our midst this morning, Father. Touch our hearts, touch our lives as we give our hearts back to you in worship this morning. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you, and we give you our hearts this morning. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen, amen. Worship with us this morning, church. Good morning, everybody. Look at your neighbor and say hello. Brother Rick was talking with me a while ago, and... He mentioned the sawdust trail, and these songs we're going to do this morning actually came from that generation. A lot of tent revivals, a lot of brush harbors. This first song was written by Dad Spear, who began the Spear family. It says, I never shall forget the day. Long years ago, when out in sin, I had no hope, no peace within, down on my knees, in agony, I prayed to Jesus and He gladly set me free. burdens of my soul were rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for He's everything to me. Now in the old days we'd pause at the end so everybody get a breath. So here we go again. Now I can feel him by my side, my feeble steps, he comes to guide, when trials come, he comforts me, through faith in him or sin I have the victory. Oh, 
say I like that amen if you got one of those red books out there this one's on page 52 it says Jesus hold my hand this kind of predates dad spear Albert Brumley was a big time gospel singer during that time period this is one of those repeat songs you've got to listen for brother Nate as he gets in there okay you ready Jesus, hold my hand. Come on, everybody. Jesus, hold 
There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I haven't had a workout like that in a while. Amen. On page 100, no, 88, it says, I'm going that way. Now, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, we can run away with this song, but we're going to slow it down just a little bit because I'm worried about Brother Rick and his fingers over there getting all tangled up. <laughs> Amen. Here we go. <clears throat> I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful love. A beautiful place for mansions where the skies are bright. Where all we believe the Savior dear forever will stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. shake them at me. There you are. All ten fingers and let's try this. There you go. There you go. Let's just do the course. Let's don't get too adventurous. Here we go. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. This is the Savior I adore. This with me stay. I'm clinging to Him and never shall stray. prayer please do remember these needs throughout the week remember those to the right and your left that may not be here this morning and pray for them and their families needs to be met this morning lord jesus we are so thankful to be in in your house today lord father to have the privilege to come into your place God, as we worship you and give you honor and praise and glory for the good that you are to us. God, for how good you are to us each and every day, Lord. Even though we do not deserve your mercy and grace, you still give it to us anyway. And God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, as we've offered praise to you in thanksgiving, God, we're coming to you on behalf of our needs to be met this morning. Lord, there are some that are, un that are lost that do not know you. And Lord, we, we pray that they begin to have a relationship with you. And God, not also that, that you would strengthen all of our relationships with you personally. Well, that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts and our lives and would draw us closer to you. Lord, 
Lord, as we could just live for you better each and every day through your grace. And Lord, for those that have lost loved ones over this past week, Lord, we just pray that you would wrap your arms around them, God, that you would give them peace. Lord, peace that comes only from you. Lord, that we sometimes can't even understand but a peace that comes from you, a comfort that comes from you. Lord, we pray that you would touch bodies this morning that are that are sick, that need your physical touch today. We pray that you would meet those needs in those lives today, God. We've got so many within this congregation and our friends and our family, God, that need your touch desperately in their lives. God, I just pray for each and every need that was represented this morning by hands lifted up, by spoken needs, or those in our hearts that maybe were too tender to to speak out in public. God, you see our needs. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would move in a mighty way in every heart, every situation, every, every home, every every place this morning and everyone. And Lord, we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing with me if you will. What a fellowship. What a joy divinely. is mine leaning on the everlasting arm leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning leaning Sing the chorus with me again, everybody. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure. singing with us this morning. Right now, we're going to take two or three minutes, walk across the aisles, <laughs> shake two or three people's hand, welcome them to Bethel Assembly of God. It's great to see you this morning.
it's so great to see you. Kinda, I can't really see you. But anyway, I kind of feel like Jesus always had to have some goggles, you know, because on day one, they created the heavens and the earth and a light, right? You everybody remember that from last week in Big Kids? That was so fun, right? It was so awesome. But today, we're talking about day two. Day two, God created a space between the waters. He created a space between the waters that was called sky. And we find that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. And God said, let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. And that's exactly what happened. That's so awesome. You know, the great thing about creation, whoo, the great thing about creation is everything happened exactly as God said. Not somewhat, not approximately, not almost. You know, everything happened exactly like God said. And that's so great, that's so mighty, that just shows the power of God, amen? So today, get ready for a great B Kids. I want you all to come forward right now. All the kids, all the teenagers, everybody come forward. I'm gonna pray for you this morning since pastor's not here. Come on, let's pray, and then you kids can go to B Kids. All right, well, yesterday I had a golden anniversary. No, 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 no. We haven't been married 50 years yet. <laughs> 50 years ago yesterday I met Jesus, so I asked Jesus into my heart, and that's great. And this song tells you exactly how that felt. Heart of mine, heart of mine, since you met Jesus, oh, you feel so fine. I'm so glad you came into this heart of mine. Love divine, love divine, that's what you put into this heart of mine. I'm so glad you came into this heart of mine. I used to have such hate in my heart No peace of mind I thought my world was falling apart Then the Lord came by Just in time into this heart of mine Heart of mine Since you met Jesus, oh you feel so fine I'm so glad you came into this heart of mine I used to have such hate in my heart No peace of mind I thought my world was falling apart Then the Lord came by Just in time into this heart of mine Heart of mine Since you met Jesus, oh you've been so fine I'm so glad you came into this heart I'm so glad you came into my heart I'm so glad he came into my heart to stay Y'all sound like y'all know what that's all about. All right, so before we hear the preaching of the word, which is the most important thing today, we'll just do this short one to... Uh, Get our hearts ready, okay? I find the right words to it. Thank you. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew That I may love what thou dost love And do what 
thou wouldst do Oh, breathe on me, breath of God Until my heart is pure Until my will is one with thine To do and to endure Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine. Until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Again, good morning to you. Hallelujah. In the book of Job chapter 33. We have this verse that I share with you. I'm a little hot, sir. <clears throat> the Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Brother Rick's song, God Breathed on Me, is so apropos for this morning. And the message that the Holy Spirit has shared with me. It's very important that we prepare ourselves, you and I, one, to speak the Word of God, two, to receive the Word of God, and three, that we all understand the Word of God. And so let's bow our heads and you pray for me because I'm fighting my nose this morning, okay? Or my nose is fighting me, as the case may be. But we're, we want the Word of God to go to your heart, straight to your soul, and that you may grow bolder and encouraged in His name. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, we bow before you in the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory, Lord, for the presence of God in this house. For, Lord, we realize grace and your glory go. There you are. And so it is our desire that you should enter into our hearts, into our lives, and that you should Quicken us. We call that anointing. Quicken us together that we must receive and that we might deliver the good points, the good word, the good nourishment of God into our hearts and lives. Master, we pray and we thank you that you guide our lives daily. Right now, Lord, we worship you and we receive the abundance of your blessing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Preaching on this thought, when you know who, then you will understand why. When you know who, then you'll understand why. As I'm looking at the book of Job, the Spirit of God hath anointed me, or hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. <clears throat> I'm encouraged. I'm blessed. God hath made me. I think sometimes we read the creation story. I think sometimes we get involved with all that is transpiring there when we miss the very vital part that God has made us. We are made of God. <clears throat> In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he refers to the fact that he formed man out of the dust of the ground. 
as I begin to look at God and I see that he formed man out of the dust of the ground, I begin to think, well, God the Father must have loved us. But then I, I read over in the Gospel of John, the first, first verses of the first chapter, and it says, and the Word, okay, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then I read back, and it says that Jesus, the Word, <clears throat> was a part of creation. And that everything that was made, made by Him. On top of that, nothing that was made, was made by Him as well. And so as I come to this conclusion then, the Father was present at the forming of man. <clears throat> and that the Son was present at the forming of man. And that lastly, the Holy Spirit. Chapter 1 verse 2 talks about the Holy Ghost moving upon the face of the waters. If ever there was proof then for the Trinity, there it is, right there. <clears throat> On top of that, we have all three of them involved in our creation. I begin to see that our God created everything around. For several days, He transpired, and He worked with, and He put man together with the elements of this earth. And in so doing, he looked upon it evening and morning and he says, it's good. It's very good. Then I got to thinking. God shaped everything with his hand. But when it came to shaping man, when it came to reaching out to man, he says, let us make man in our image. As I'm understanding, <clears throat> he shaped us to be after the order of God. Not to be gods, don't get me wrong, but in the image of God. I don't think that any of us look like God. I really don't think that Adam looked like God, but he never said we would be twins, we would be lookalikes. He said in the image. <clears throat> and so that which consists of God, He's imparted unto you and I. Let's be specific. I believe He gave us the right of choice. I believe He gave to us the right to make a decision. I believe He gave to us <clears throat> the unique ability to submit to God, <clears throat> excuse me, or resist God completely. We have that ability about, uh, given to us. Over in the book of James, chapter, the fourth, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, says, Submit to God, okay? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. Next verse. Everything in there says that we have a choice. We can submit to God, or we may not submit to God. I believe that's the creation image because God is sovereign and He puts sovereignty into your life. <clears throat> he puts sovereignty into my life. As I'm looking at that sovereignty, then I have a choice. I can be good. I can make the decision. I can be good. Or I can be evil. In the book of Revelations, talks about there was a day when good would be spoken of. There is a day when evil would be considered good. There's the flip-flop. I have news for you. That day has arrived. It's here. There are so many things that should be right that are now wrong and things that I would have never dreamed have become a part of our society. What do we do? Where do we run to? My wife says to me, after every news broadcast, is there not anything we can do? And I'm shaking my head. I'm saying, 2022, you got to vote. No, but there should be something we can do. And I'm, I'm perplexed. I don't know what to say to that. What do we do? If we try some things that are evil, then we go to jail ourselves. If we just fall on our prayer bones... I'm, I'm concerned that the strength of God gets washed away in the torrential rains of evil. 
I think there's something the church needs to be doing is standing together in prayer and in study, standing together and leaning on the everlasting arms of God. I think there's something we need to do to make the stand because those days are upon us. I don't want to get into politics, but I want you to see we have choices that are in our hands. Man then is a love creation of God, and man has been given the choice to decide whether to follow God or not follow God. I woke up one day and I realized, kind of like the light came on, and it occurred to me that God is a perfect gentleman. He will not force himself upon you. Standing there looking in the mirror of the bathroom where that, that occurred, I said, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to make the choice. And in that same moment, it's like the Holy Spirit quickened me. The devil is not a gentleman. The devil will manipulate you. The devil will take control. He will ride roughshod right over the top of you. He has no concern. He's not courteous at all. He wants your life. God, on the other hand, will woo you and coo you. You like that? <clears throat> what is wooing? Well, if you ever chased a girl, gentlemen, that's called wooing. You go after her. You call her. You write her sweet notes. You send her text. In the old days, we sent them candy. When you got serious, you sent them some jewelry. If you're really serious, you sent their mother some jewelry. <clears throat> that would guarantee you at least you could get in the door. It's called wooing. I see then that the Holy Ghost is really good at wooing people into the family of God. He draws them. He woos them. He stays with them. Sometimes you're so miserable, we call that conviction. Until you relax. And you let go, and you let God have your life. When you know who is in control of your life, then the misunderstandings go away. I'm looking here and seeing where Adam is. And I'm seeing that he wakes up, and there's so much going on around him, but he is never uncertain about his life. I don't think anywhere in Scripture you can ever find a place where Adam said, Who am I? Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? There was never a point when that was in doubt in his life. He wakes up. He begins to breathe. And he realizes God is his creator. I'm trying to talk to you and I. Wake up, folks. We don't need to be woke. We need to awake. We need to know that God is in the controls of our life and He is our Creator. He is the one who sustains us. Adam never had these uncertainties that we have today because he knew God was the one who gave him life. Do you know that? Is that firmly planted in your deepest spiritual being? God is the creator of my life. He gave me life. We also know that He is the one who formed and He fashioned a plan for my life after the will of God. I'm looking here at James 4, 7 and 8 again, and I'm seeing that if I submit to God, then the devil cannot rush in, and as I... I to God, the devil cannot return because I belong to God. I wish you would get a hold that you belong to God and you have a strong place in the kingdom and in the scheme of things. God is the one who formed you. He fashioned you. He has a plan for you. Sometimes we don't allow this same God to put his plan in us. Adam was laying there, a dust-formed body laying in the ground, and God bent over and breathed into his nostrils, Genesis 2, 7 again. And as he breathes, he becomes a living soul. He breathed into him his plan. When he awakes, later in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses about 28, 29, he puts a blessing upon them. He sits them in the garden. He names this. He names that. He brings a woman to him and, and he calls her Eve. 
Things begin to come together. He's following after the plan of God. I do not believe that God is any less meticulous in your life and my life than he was with Adam and Eve. I believe that you have an opportunity to reach out and take hold of the hand of God and walk with victory and walk with the blessing and walk with the prosperity of God in your life. This God breathes thing is so important to me. For I realize as long as God is breathing in me, his plan is functioning in me. But I've also already established we can go the other way just as quick. Somebody else can breathe into your world. If you're struggling, if things are going wrong, if there's something happening in, in your life that is all maladjusted, you need to check up and see who's breathing on your life besides you. <clears throat> I did a lot of counseling in the day, marriage counseling. I refuse to do it anymore because I never thought I ever helped anybody <clears throat> at all. I found out <clears throat> trouble starts when a third voice enters the couple's world. A third voice. You know, a sweetheart, not your sweetheart. A guy, not your guy. An in-law, not a part of the couple. A relative, not a part of the couple. A friend who's not really a friend. When that third voice arrives, trouble starts. That third voice comes along. It emboldens one or the other of them to come against the other ones. It's not long before you've got marriage problems. It's not long before it falls apart, you're separated. It's not long before you're divorced and you wonder what happened. I'm going to tell you, a third voice showed up. A third voice. I'm here to tell you that third voice most time is the enemy of hell. He may have a physical form. He may have a name you know. But he's acting as an agent of the enemy. You have an opportunity to stop them from breathing into your life. You have an opportunity to put a halt <clears throat> to where things are going with your life. You have an opportunity to turn back toward God and let God breathe in your life His plan and His power and His glory. Don't listen to the enemy. Don't listen to the evil. Whoever you let breathe into your life is there feeding your life. And when they can feed you, they can control you. <clears throat> we have a I guess Noah's six months, nine months. And he's living in the trailer beside my house and comes into the house for breakfast every morning. And mama feeds him. She takes, he loves pancakes. She takes the forks and puts it in his mouth. He doesn't have a choice. He either eats it or he wears it. It's just that way it happens. Now, lately, he's wanting to feed himself. And I thought, yes, give him a fork. No, didn't work. He takes his little fingers and the pan sopping with syrup and he smears it. The next thing I know, it's in his hair. It's on the chair. And I'm going, I'm not holding you today. <clears throat> Somebody clean this child up. Who put it there, Mama? Mama's controlling the sticky. And mama has to clean up the sticky. Mama's feeding him. Mama's taking care of him. She controls his world. She controls when he wakes up. She controls when he goes down. She controls what he wears. Does he have any say-so? Not at all. He gets what she puts on him for the day. She said the other day, we start out all bundled up. And by the end of the day, we've taken everything off and we're down to shorts and a pullover. Because that's the way life is in northwest Florida. She controls it. I've not heard Noah complain, although he whimpers and throws his little lip out. I don't understand what that means yet. But I'm sure he will tell us one of these days. I want my own way. 
I want to do my own thing. I'm trying to tell you, if someone is feeding you, they're controlling you. It would be good for you to be fed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because he can control what comes your way. People who are under control as opposed to people who are under submission. Let's look at that for just a moment. Because we must make a decision which way we're going to go. I see then that if we're under submission, life is much better. But if we are under control, then we have problems. If God is taking us into his arms and embracing us and we are drawing near to God, then these things come together with protection. We are no longer vulnerable to others, but we are protected by the Lord God Almighty. We are protected by the Holy Spirit. I still believe in angels, and we're protected by the angels that surround us. Somebody say amen. Anyone or anything that comes along and seeks to define you and define your world, seeks to manipulate you, can be routed out by the kingdom of God and the power of God and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Turn to God when you're perplexed. Turn to God when you don't understand. God will breathe and the point, the way, and the direction are before you. Receive his blessings. If there's one thing that's a problem with the church today that I have found is that believers do not know how to receive. We've heard it preached, you have not because you ask not. And so we do a lot of asking. Can you say amen? Sometimes he says you ask amiss and you don't have it because you don't know how to ask for what you're to receive. But what I'm seeing, the problem is receiving is a struggle for believers. We don't mind asking. We believe in God. He's a present help in the time of need. But to receive means to embrace. And I'm not so good at embracing. I'm not so good at taking in. I'm not so good at drawing nigh. How is that? It's because I don't know how to worship. Do you love me? I don't know how to worship. Because to worship, you have to receive. Worship is more than just praying hard. Worship is more than singing hard and clapping. Worship is more than standing together in a circle. Worship is bowing before God and receiving His presence as real and as tangible as it possibly can be. That I put all things between me. I put all things that define me. I put all things that hinder me away from me so that God may move into me. I see some problems. People, a lot of them have no direction. And they run aimlessly. Multitudes get up every day fighting, battling, beating the air, trying their best to establish themselves in today. When anxiety is at a max, when frustration is at a max, when they get out of bed, they're feeling beat up and tired. And when they go back to bed, they can hardly sleep. I see this coming along everywhere. I walk through Walmart and I see folks that are struggling. I watched a lady tear up her child the other day. And I realized she wasn't whipping him. She was whipping herself. It just bothered me. And then around the corner came a, 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 an assistant. And we don't do that here. And I thought, oh my God, you're going to start something for sure. And I thought, there's a riot coming. And I left. I didn't want to be a part of that. People struggle. Rage is among us all. Anger is among us all. Because they have no direction. I don't know where I'm going. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know which way. I don't know what to do. Tell me, somebody tell me. And I'm here to suggest to you that you look at this word of God. Because if you know God and you know his word, then you have your direction. It's as simple as that. 
if you know God, if you've walked with God, if He's a part of your life, if He's not a stranger to you, then you have your direction. You can find out the why. You can find out the wherefore. I see multitudes exhausted. I see them frustrated. I see them angry. I see on TV and I hear it in the news broadcast, in the interviews, and I hear the voice of anger. The other day the protests were out and, and they were throwing and cursing and screaming and blocking and knocking folks down and taking shields and beat other folks and I'm thinking what is the problem they have no direction and they're screaming for some kind of identity and I'm here to tell you as you sit before me here is your identity in this book if you know what's in this book if you know the God of this book if you know the spirit of God of this book if you know Savior of this book, then you're no longer looking for direction, for you've got it. It's there for you. The problem is that we don't often yield to it. We need to become a people under the control of God. <clears throat> a people under God's direction. When you get up every day and you know who you are battling, and you know who your enemy is, you know the direction of your life when you know the devil is bad and God is good, when you know that prayer is the right way to go and gossip, dispute, and drama and all the other hindrances are bad, then your life begins to take on purpose. You need purpose in your life. My mama gave me purpose when I was two years old. She took me over to a piano. She sat me down and she says, you will play. And I looked up at her. I didn't know what wheel was. I didn't know what play was. Okay? But I found out after about 10 years, she meant what she's talking about. You will play. I didn't know it at the time, but many years later, while she was carrying me in her womb, she prayed God put music in his bones. I guess that's why I feel a little soul music from time to time. I think a little rhythm and blues ought to be there. Mother prayed it into me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then before she left this earth, she says, you got to calm some of that down. <clears throat> Folks, you be careful what you pray for. You may get a double dose. I think it was Elijah that had received, no, it was Elisha, received a double dose from Elijah. And he took the mantle and he swat the, the, the river and he cries out, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And the sons of the prophets watched as he hit the water with his mantle, the mantle of his, his prophet mentor. And as he hit it, the, the waves of the Jordan River, they parted open, the current stopped, and he walks across on dry ground. And somebody in the sons of the prophets says, he's been with Elijah. I'm going, yeah, duh. Where do you get this if you don't get it? from being in the presence of God. I'm telling you, there's a benefit from being with God. It gives you purpose in your life. There's a benefit in that it makes you wise. Woke up reading the scripture says, and Jesus was made wisdom unto me. Jesus has made wisdom. Folks, I don't, I don't try to be stupid, but I, I tend to be. I don't try to be... Ignorant, but I tend to be. But I have found out when I turn to Jesus, whenever I walk with Jesus, when I hold his hand, when I cry out for the supreme master of my life, that I find there's a wisdom that comes, and I'm not the source, it's from God above. Amen. If you get known by who you hang out with, then I would suggest you hang out with Jesus. That'll make you a believer. Hello? And so there's an intelligence issue here. That when you know your creator and when you know your God and when you're under direction from God, you have access to a wisdom. In the book of James, he says, let him that lacks wisdom ask. And he'll give it to you. And he won't fuss at you because you didn't have it. I'm so glad that part was in the verse. Because many times I don't have it. But he does. Direction. The guidance that handles every facet of life. That's what direction is. That guidance. I just know what I've got to do here. My grandmother <clears throat> lived in Andalusia, Alabama all her life. 
And she had a sixth scent about things. I know about that stuff, she would say. I heard her at the table. We had a big square table with a lazy Susan and all the food went in the middle of the table and you spun it around and you got what you wanted. You had to be careful that you didn't knock somebody's glass over with the lazy Susan. I mean, it was a trip and a half. And I would see her stand there. She says, I know all about that. Didn't matter what the conversation was. I know all about that. And I'm going to tell you what I know. And we sermon from grandma. And when she got through, she did. She knew all about it. It was an Andalusia wisdom, but she knew all about it just the same. I'm talking to us here. There's a direction to every fact of life. And this book knows all about it. It's got it down. I see that there's power. There is sustaining release to face every task and every circumstance. There is power in this book. We used to sing the song and I didn't do it today. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. There is resurrection power in the blood. We used to say keep it under the blood. When we were praying, when we were teaching folks. When your life was going wrong, get back underneath. Stay underneath the faucet where the power flows out, where the glory of God is. There were many old phrases that we used to have that we understood. If I walk with God, things will be different. Life is overwhelming. And if it's overwhelming you, then I want to point you toward the Lord God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because when you know God is your source, then you defeat your enemy. You're no longer looking for answers. I've got answers. Then it's just a question of waiting on God. Waiting for the moment for the plan to come together. Waiting for the time to step forward. Waiting for the trumpet to sound. Waiting for the cheers to go forth. Waiting on God and having patience because you know that when God moves, it's over. It's over. Everything's settled. The awareness of this causes us to sense a peace. Something peaceful. When I know that my Redeemer liveth. This was Job who said this. My Redeemer liveth. I, I get a great blessing out of the latter part of Job. He's talking about God. He's sharing what he understands about God. And he tells his miserable friends who've come to talk with him, I don't know where God is. And I don't know why I'm going through this battle. Have you read Job and you know what I'm talking about? Okay. I mean, life was, life was on the cutting edge right there. And Job had lost everything. And he got a miserable wife along with it. You know, I, why didn't God take the woman too? No, 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 no. God left the woman. And there she is. If there's ever any force that could overwhelm you, then Job had it in his direction. And as he's there, he tells his friends, I don't know where God is. All I know is that he beholds me through the lattice. I've got a trellis at the house. It's lettuce. Lattice. Okay? And there's a nice little rose running on it. And you can look through it and see the other side. You have to look close. Job is saying, God sees me through the lattice. I don't know where God is. But God knows where Job is. I want to talk to you. You may not, you may not understand. You may be discouraged. You may be upset. You may be frustrated. You may be angry. You may be exhausted. You may be over-medicated because you're trying to handle all of this on your own. Hello? It happens. But I can tell you, God knows exactly where you are. And He's waiting for you to turn toward Him. Turn back to Him. Let him breathe upon you. I don't, I don't know if it's all happened recently. If it's an ongoing battle. I don't know. If it's something that has surprised you. 
I don't know if it's something's been there a long, long time, but I can tell you this. If you let God breathe into your life, he will eradicate the enemy. He will cause the evil that has come your direction to pass aside and the control and the outpouring of God will come your way. Let him breathe upon you. <clears throat> Several years ago, I was visiting in the hospital with a mother and her little daughter. The little daughter was in the hospital and she had some things going on and they came in the room where she was at and they had a big swab of alcohol. Now, a four-year-old and alcohol are a prescription for trouble. Right there. And so the nurse came over and put alcohol on the boo-boo and it began to sting. And I remember the little girl's words. She looked over at Mama and she says, Blow it. Blow it. Blow it. <laughs> Blow it. <laughs> Blow it. It... It hit a spark inside of me because I see God's children and I see us going through times whenever what we need is for God just to blow His breath into my life. Blow on me today. Go, breathe on me. This was such a thing that we had a chorus a long time ago says, let Him breathe on me. And then we said it again, let Him breathe on me. And then we said it again, let him breathe on me. <clears throat> let the breath of God now breathe on me. I don't know where you are, church. But I can tell you, every day of your life you can value from God breathing into your life. Watching Chicago Meds last week. <clears throat> That's Wednesday late. We, we uh, tape it. So I was watching it. I was watching them cry out for help. The little girl in the ER and the doctors rushed in there and she could hardly breathe. And they grabbed this tube and shoved it up her nose. And she goes, oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm talking to us. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the breath of God flowed down through this house toward you this morning and you could look at me and you can say, oh.